I'm Richard Armstrong. I'm the director of the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum and Foundation on Fifth Avenue in New York City. But in fact, I grew up in Kansas City. And I grew up in a neighborhood not well known these days called Northeast. And for me, the museum was the Kansas City Museum on Gladstone Boulevard, where we went repeatedly as children to look at the stuffed animals, the historical dioramas, the planetarium, and our nearby Sled Hill, which we called Suicide Hill. I did know about the Nelson Gallery, as we called it back then, because my school took me there. And I had piano lessons nearby at the old Conservatory of Music, now the site for the Kemper Museum of Contemporary Art. So I was in the Nelson, sometimes as a shortcut, from school to music lesson. And it was an impressive place even for somebody as ignorant about art as I was in those days. But I remember in particular the um, large reconstituted Chinese courtyard with the various Buddhas in them, which I found puzzling, enticing, and ultra beautiful at the same time. So in Kansas City, the Nelson Trust and the Mary Atkins bequest offered up a fair amount of capital in the Depression, and that's really how the museum had its elegant beginnings, because it could buy very high quality material both in Europe and also because of Lawrence Sickman in China proper. And we see that today with you know great clarity and a fair amount of envy. What isn't quite so clear is that uh, patronage there has been mostly, I'd say, collectors buying things, recognizing that they will ultimately be part of the Nelson Atkins collection. And that's a, uh, one of the attributes, I think, of these smaller cities where the museum is actually one of the symbols of the city's pride and its progressiveness and its capacity in a way to it distinguish the city differently than, let's say, from a sports team. Well, Seymour actually, Mr. Knox actually bought a lot on impulse, but he had darn good impulses. In Kansas City, you have uh, gifts from people like William Minge, the playwright. That's why they have that incredible de Kooning woman. But let's bring it up more to today. When you mentioned the blocks, I think they were collecting in concert with the museum for a very long period so that all those fine impressionist and post-impressionist paintings really complement the, the core of what the museum had already. And beyond which, after I left Kansas City in 1967, I've been able to go back frequently and watch the changes at what we call now the museum. And they've all been for the better. I'm very impressed with the outdoor sculpture collection and, of course, the, the addition that Stephen Hole made about 10 or 15 years ago. The collections expanded, uh, the building, the museum, the site, even the neighborhood all seem to be much livelier. It's really quite a demonstration, I think, of inclusiveness, uh, of beauty, and a notion of great neighborliness and the capacity to enjoy yourself in a medium-sized city, which in those days to me seemed like heaven.